If you are going to yoga practice or you're a yoga teacher, this is a word that you're gonna be hearing a lot, you're probably gonna be saying it a lot, so it's even more important that you are pronouncing it correctly. Hello you, welcome back, and thank you so much for being here in another one of our pronunciation classes. Now, this is really important to me. If you don't already know, I have a few other pronunciation videos on here. But how we're saying certain words in our yoga practice, actually because yoga is from an ancient culture, it's so important we pronounce these words correctly so that we are respecting the roots from where yoga originated. I'm Angie, I'm an Indian yoga teacher, born and brought up in the UK, and here to really empower you and encourage you to respect the roots without feeling this blame or shame. Every quarter I run a workshop called Respecting Yoga's Culture, which is online. We have people joining from all over the world. So if you'd like to join the next one, check the link in the description. And before we go any further, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the like button if you are getting value from this type of video. So let's get straight into it. This is the word we are focusing on today, and this translates as pose or a posture. There are absolutely loads of postures and poses that we flow through in a physical yoga class, and every single word, when we see the Sanskrit word for that pose, ends in this word. So you're gonna be saying it a lot, like important that you do say it correctly. And there's a few different ways to say it. Let's first talk about what actually that word is. So this word means pose or posture, yes, but let's dive into the sutra from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, one of the ancient texts on yoga, to dissect a little bit more about what the word means. The really famous sutra on this word is Sthira Sukkamasanam. And that is from the Yoga Sutra 2.46. So if you have Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, you can dig that up and have a read through yourself. Sthira Sukkamasanam. Asanam, the pose, the posture. Sthira, meaning stable or steady. And Sukkam, meaning easy. So essentially, your yoga poses should feel steady, stable, and easy. It should come with ease. Now that's not to say that you're not gonna find a particular posture like Hanumanasa and splits pose, for example, really challenging. But what it means is that we wanna focus on finding steadiness and ease in every single pose that we do. Instead of doing what I see so many of my clients do, what I see so many people who come on my yoga retreats do, trying to get into a particular posture, let's keep it as the example of splits pose, holding the breath, pulling the body into this really difficult contortion without properly warming it up. Um, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. And doing everything you can possibly do, albeit not safely, to nail that posture. And this really comes back to the fact that we have made it, you're good at yoga or you're bad at yoga, depending on whether you can do certain postures, and that is just absolutely not true. So firstly, get that idea out of your mind and get this Thira Sukkam Asanam really into your mind. When you're doing a particular posture, you want to make sure that you're focusing on your breath. You want to make sure you're focusing on Drishti, which is the gaze where you're looking to in a particular pose. You want to make sure that you are properly warmed up before going into a deep, intense stretch so that you are keeping your body safe, so that you can get into that deep mobility and flexibility, but in a really safe and healthy way. And when you do that, especially when you focus on your breath, you will naturally find that stability. You will naturally find that ease. Does it mean that you're in the full legs out and you're in the perfect ideal splits? Maybe not, maybe you're kind of halfway there, but you're getting there gradually and slowly and you're enjoying the process of it as opposed to pushing yourself, contorting yourself, creating pain and actually making it harder for you to get into that posture. So with that said about what asana actually is, let's talk about the different ways you can pronounce it. Now firstly, I wanna talk about the common mistakes I hear. I always hear asana. And I know this has become a little bit controversial because there is a project management tool in the tech sector which has this name and it's taken from yogic philosophy and they have mispronounced it as asana. It is not asana. I wrongly thought it was years ago when I first stumbled across the practice in gyms and yoga studios and I saw it as so far removed from the practice that my ancestors, my parents, my grandparents had taught me when I was growing up. But I remember going home and saying to my mum, mum, it's pronounced asana and she was pronouncing it correctly, obviously the Indian woman that she is. And I was like, no, 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 it's asana because that's what I had heard. Actually, you can pronounce it one of two ways. We, in my family, and many Indians or many South Asians that I know, drop the last A, and you'll see this happen quite a lot. So actually, it's not yoga, it's yog. 
Ayurveda, which is another sister science of yoga, essentially ancient holistic healing modality, really ancient, gorgeous practice that you can 100% still apply today. I'm an Ayurvedic consultant. So if you want any questions answered, we want to book any consultations. Again, all the links are down there. But again, Ayurveda, egg on the end. Actually, many people pronounce that Ayurved. Similarly, you've got it written, asana. A lot of people, including myself, will drop that A, asan. So when you look at it, you've got asana or asan. It's very different from asana. And it really is where you're placing that emphasis on the word. Asana is the emphasis on the second part. Asan or asana is the emphasis on the first part. If you have spent your entire life saying asana and it feels really weird to change that and you're like, oh, I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to get it wrong. It's okay. Just take your time, practice and keep saying it in your classes. Keep saying it when you're doing your self practice so that if you are a yoga teacher, you then feel really confident to go in your retreats or go into a room and teach your class and pronounce it correctly. We see this word at the end of every single posture. So pigeon pose, Kapotasan or Kapotasana, not Kapot Asana. Or you've got, let's say, tree pose, Vrikshasan or Vrikshasana, not Vrikshasana. So it's really subtle, but it's really important. And I hope that you take this on, save this, come back to it, share it with someone who needs to see it. If you got value out of this video, which I really hope you did, please make sure you hit the like button. That makes such a difference. If there is another word that you feel a little bit stuck with, a bit confused, you're not quite sure if you're pronouncing it correctly, pop it down in the comments because I'd love to hear from you as to what you want to learn more of. I have got a couple of other classes on here, videos to really help you with pronunciation of things like namaste, of things like shanti, of other words that you see crop up how to properly chant so that you are really giving that respect and love for the practice that you get so much out of, that you know we wouldn't really be able to have the practice of yoga if it hadn't been passed down over the centuries by the ancient sages, by the ancient rishis. And to these people, we owe our practice. We owe the incredible benefits that we've got from our practice. And so it is really important that we give that culture and give the ancient roots of the practice the love and respect that it really does deserve, that I see so many people want to, but they don't often know where to start. And that's why I wanna make these videos so that you don't feel scared and you don't feel like, well, where do I go? But you actually feel empowered to be able to make a positive change. You know, if you're a yoga teacher, the way that you say things, it goes on and goes on and goes on. Your students pick that up and learn it. They might then become teachers and then they're spreading the mispronunciation of the word. And a really common example for this one is the word chakra or what many people think it is, chakra. Again, if you wanna learn more about that, I've got a video, I'll link it up here so you can go straight and watch that video to learn more about what the energy centers are and how to say that word correctly. If you did enjoy this, I also have a playlist of yoga teacher tips with a load of other things, other videos. If you wanna come on retreat with me or come to any of my events, then again, all the details in the description. And also I have an online membership platform called Unearthed. So if you really wanna deepen your practice, whether you are a teacher or not, over 300 classes, all classes led by South Asian teachers, which I'm so proud of, based all over the world. Classes are across movement, meditation, breath work, Ayurveda, philosophy. You really get deep into lots of different topics so that you can just get more out of your yoga practice and practice yoga on the mat, but also take it off the mat so that you're really implementing it into your everyday life. Thank you so much again for joining. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you again very soon in our next class. Bye.